In this video, we're gonna explore some real world economic data using Python and Pandas. We're also gonna pull down that data directly from Fred, which is a free resource using their Python API. I'm really excited about today's video. I think that you'll learn a lot about Python, Pandas, plotting, how to use web APIs for pulling down data and exploring it within Python. This is an incredibly rich data source and there's so much that you can do with it. Hopefully this video will inspire you to start your own project using the same data source. Now everything I'm gonna be doing is in a Kaggle notebook, which means that you can just copy the notebook and not have to set up anything yourself. All you need is a Kaggle account. My name is Rob. I make videos about data science, coding in Python, and machine learning. If you like this video, please consider subscribing so you'll get an update next time I release a video. Okay, let's start looking at some economic data. Okay, so here we are in a Kaggle notebook. Like I said, this is something that you can copy and walk through the code yourself very easily. Now, Kaggle does have a lot of data sets already on the website that you can take advantage of, but I wanna show us how we can use the Fred API to pull down a lot of this data because it's a really powerful tool that you can use in the future and have up-to-date uh, data sets that are already available on the Fred website. And we're gonna show you how to do that, but first we need to make some imports um, to use. And of course, we're gonna import pandas as PD. We're gonna import NumPy as NP. And for visualizations, we're gonna import matplotlib pyplot as P plt and import plotly express as px. We're also gonna um, import, oh, let's do some styles. So plot style use, and this is gonna give us a default plotting style for all of our plots. We're gonna use 538 it will look nice for this data set. Um, and then I want to actually import the Fred API uh, Python package, but it's not available by default in the Kaggle notebooks, but that's not a problem. We can just do a cell with an ex exclamation point and uh, pip install it from here. So we're gonna pip install the Fred API and if I normally ran this, it'll output all the uh, results from the install, but I kind of want to suppress that. So I'm going to output this to dev null, which will just um, make it so we don't have to see all the outputs of the pip install. But while that's installing, it's actually loading up our notebook. We can see it's run. I'm going to also import from Fred. So I, from this Fred API, I'm going to import Fred. And what else should I do? I'll do this pet set option. Max columns is 500. And this will allow us in pandas to see if we have a really wide pandas data frame, we'll be able to see up to 500 columns instead of them um, hiding those midi middle ones by default. And then I'm also gonna add a color palette. So color palette's gonna be uh, something that I just pull from uh, matplotlib. The nice thing about this color palette is it'll just be a list of colors that we can use to change the colors in our plot so they all don't look the same color. And this line of code I use a lot because it just pulls the default colors from whatever theme we're using in matplotlib. Let's go ahead and run that. Now, let me just show you before we get too far that this is the website Fred. You can see that they have a bunch of different data sources. It's all time series data, financial and economic data that um, is readily available. And they have their own API. So if I search for Fred API, we can see here that their API uh, has a lot of details. And if you want to request the API, uh, you need to get an API key. On their website, you can request it here. 
it's pretty easy to do and it's basically just a code they're giving you an example here of a b c d e but it's a, a string of numbers and letters that you will be unique to you and then you can use it to pull the data directly into pandas and instead of having to scrape the website or download CSVs and stuff like that, which we want to avoid. So this step you'll have to do on your own, but it's pretty painless to do. And once you do it, you'll have basically a string that you can paste in here. And you, we'll say um, uh, Fred key will be this. And I'll say put your key here. But because I have my own key, I'm gonna actually pull that in from Kaggle's secrets. I've actually saved um, here in this add-on, I've saved a secret, my Fred API key as a secret, and I can um, use this line of code to load that Fred API key quickly and in a way that no one else can see it because I don't want anyone else to use my API key um, and hit Fred's website over and over again. Okay, so what are we going to do first? We're going to create create the Fred object. And this will allow us to pull in all the data. So we create the Fred object um, by using this Fred that we imported. And you can see if I do shift tab here inside of this Fred object, it'll tell me the doc documents for it and we basically just need to provide it this API key so I'm going to explicitly say our API key is this Fred key again this will be the key that you get when you apply for it and we're going to call this our Fred object and this is just uh, the main object that we'll be using to doing all our searching and pulling down of data from the Fred website and um, all right so that now that's it create created we're going to search Fred, uh, search for economic data. So two of the main things that Fred allows us to do is one search and number two is pull down the actual data. The search is the same as if you were on the website and you were to search in that search bar, it'll give you the results, but in a pandas data frame, and the pulling of data is similar to if you had clicked on download CSV on the Fred website, but we're doing this all through Python, so it's really nice we don't have to mess with any of the uh, web interfaces. So let's go ahead and search, and you can see here there's actually a search by release, search by category, but we're just gonna do a general search, and then we're gonna search for S&P, because I know that S&P 500 is on Fred, and this will give us an example of what the results look like. All right, so the result is a pandas data frame that shows us um, uh, the series IDs that are available on the FREB website that we can pull from. The ID name, some of the information about when the dates, data starts and ends, the title of it, and then also the frequency that the data is gathered. There's also, um, it's some information about if the data is seasonally adjusted or not. So some of the data sets, they'll adjust it for the seasonality, but um, this is just uh, not seasonally adjusted, the raw S&P numbers. And then it, the notes tell us a more descriptive detail of what we're searching for. Now there's also this popularity ranking on Fred. So if I make this result S&P uh, data frame, S&P search, this is our search results data frame. And I wanna um, actually sort this as it comes in. Oh, another thing here is this S&P search shape, you'll see is a thousand rows of results. The reason why it's exactly a thousand is because the Fred search has a limit on it. And this is a limit just to make sure we don't uh, pull way too much data that we don't expect to from Fred and the limit defaults to 1000. So you could change that limit if you wanted to. You can also uh, ch change the sort order. So let's do the sort order by the popularity. 
This will give us popularity. So let's do order by uh, the popularity. So now we'll look and we'll see that our search results are gonna be sorted, sorted by the popularity of the results for everything with SMP. Um, and uh, yeah, so now we have the, the, this data frame. We have all the seri different series IDs that we might wanna pull from. All right, so I'll leave the head of this there. And next thing we'll do is actually pull down some data. data. Pull raw data. So let's try to actually pull in the raw data for one of these series. Let's just pull this ID SMP, which is actually the SMP index value uh, coming in daily. And we can do that using the spread object that we've created by using git series. Now there's a few different ways that we can pull in these series, but we're gonna only focus on the main git series for now. If there were different versions of the series, then you might wanna look back at a historic version, but we're just gonna pull in this, we know it's called SMP 500. And then uh, we could give it an observation start time and end time but we're just gonna provide it the series ID, which is S&P 500 and pull that in. And what we see here is now we have a pandas series with the index as the date time column and the values as the price of that S&P 500. So let's call this S&P 500, that's our series. And let's do some quick visualization just to make sure the data is what we expect it to be. So we'll take this series and we'll run a plot on it. Pandas is nice because it'll just let us plot right out of the box. Uh, and there are a few things I wanna do to this plot to make it a little easier to read. So let's change the fig size to be a little wider. I like to do this in financial or time series data because uh, usually the data is going from left to right and your eye kind of wants to see across the dates. So making it a little wider helps. Let's also add a title called S&P 500. And then let's, um, yeah, let's just see what this looks like. Okay, so it looks a little wider and bigger. I think this is nicer looking. And then another thing I wanna do is change this line width of the line because it's a little too large here to really see the detail. And we can change that using LW parameter in our plot. Okay, so maybe it's a little too skinny there, maybe a little bigger. And plot, so there we are. Did, did, we pulled in the raw data and we plotted it. Let's actually make this in plot. Great. So number four, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in a few different data, time series data sets from Fred and we're gonna merge them and see how those things interact. And there's a bunch of different interesting things we can pull from Fred. So let's take, uh, let's check it out and see what we have. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is try to pull in some data about multiple data series and then compare them side by side. So um, we want to pull in some data that we have maybe monthly information about and um, maybe something that we have data about for each state. So um, since Fred has a lot of information about unemployment, let's go ahead and try to pull in the unemployment rates and we're gonna use Fred search to do that. We're gonna search for unemployment and we are going to order, let's just go ahead and do this results. So let's call it unemployment results. And we can see here that there are a handful of different unemployment data sets that we can pull in. Some are monthly, um, some are in percentage, 
and you can see some are seasonally adjusted and others are not. Let's go ahead and pull this um, seasonally adjusted monthly unemployment rate, which is called unrate here. And we can do this by doing our Fred get series for unrate. And call this unrate. Now we can see we have the unemployment rate seasonally adjusted. Again, just to quickly plot and see what it looks like. There we go. Oh, big jump here when COVID-19 hit. And then let's also look if we can see in this unemployment rate if we can get anything specific to a state. So it looks like there are some states um, data in here. If you look, here's Ohio and Georgia. So maybe let's search for Fred unemployment state. There we go. So we have unemployment rate in Georgia, Seattle, a bunch of them. And um, we can also, let's take the results and see how many there are. There's a thousand ro rows. So let's go ahead and filter this down a little bit. So filter. And we can see that this filter expects a tuple, something like frequency and seasonal adjustment. So we're gonna filter down to the frequency as monthly. And this will only return results that have a frequency of monthly. And let's search for unemployment rate. All right, so this is our unemployment data frame. Let's put this up here. And we're going to want to filter this down and get the series for just a subset of this. Since this has um, this has more than just unemployment rate, we're going to actually filter the data set on the title column. So let's go ahead and try to find just monthly, not seasonally adjusted values in percentage. And we're gonna run a query on this unemployment data frame in order to do that. So let's look in the seasonally adjusted column. We're gonna query in the seasonally adjusted column and only pull when it has seasonally adjusted is true or as, as the value. Now, how many values are we down to 309 rows? And uh, it looks like there are some, these last ones that we do not want to include. We wanna make sure that the units is in percent. So let's do this. And units equals percent. And the shape on this, 156. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this unemployment data frame that's filtered and save it off, and then take this unemployment data frame, and we're gonna search for only when it has unemployment rate in the type title. And the way we can do that is by looking at the title um, and applying a string filter on this. So when, let's do string uh, contains, unemployment rate. So this will filter out any of these results that do not have the actual unemployment rate in the title. And then we'll locate where that is true. And now we have a data set that is much smaller, but we don't know what size. So let's run a shape on this. 54. So we've got almost just about the 50 states, probably Washington, D.C. is in there. And in that main overall unemployment rate is there. OK, um, so now that we have all the search results that we want to pull the raw data of, let's put this all together. Let's delete these since we don't need them anymore and call this our unemployment 
data, metadata data frame. So the next thing we want to do is actually go through each of these IDs and pull the series data down. And the way that we'll do that is we're going to actually have to loop through each of them and then run that get series uh, Fred command on it. But it's not that hard. Let's try it out by doing uh, the unemployment data frame index. Now the index are all of the different, um, the index has all of the different IDs that we want to pull down. Uh, let's look at the length of this, 54, yeah. So for my ID in these, we're gonna wanna pull this series and we're gonna do this using the get series for that each ID. And then we're gonna save this as our results. Now I'm gonna put a break in here after the first loop just so we can see what the output of this is. So the output is this series with the date index and the values as, um, as the value of the, which is the unemployment rate. And then we're, we're gonna wanna join these all up together eventually. So let's go ahead and make this to a data frame. And we can do that by running the to frame command on this panda series. And by default, the column name is gonna be a zero, but we don't want it to be zero. So we're gonna actually give the name equals my ID. So now we have a pandas data frame with an unemployment rate as the title of the column and the index as the date time. So we're gonna go ahead and do this, make this results again. And then we're gonna make a list that will store all these results in called all results. And every time we loop through, we'll append this list. And let's let that run. Okay, so that's done running. It's pulled for all of those 54 different unemployment rate uh, features that we wanted to pull. And now they are in, if we look at this type of this all results, they are in a list. And each of the values in the list has one data frame with each of these different, looks like California, Florida, Texas, New York, all of the unemployment rates. It each is its own series or pandas data frame. Okay, so now we wanna take all these results that we have that are stored in a, a list and actually concatenate them together. And we can do that pretty easily using PD concat on this list. And we're gonna make the axis one to make sure that they're all stacked side by side. Now, some of these the, don't have the values for the same dates and they'll just be filled in with null values for those dates. So I'm gonna run this and you can see that actually the unemployment rate goes way back to 1948 but the state level ones didn't start until later. So those values are all null up until recently when we have values for each state. But that's just a good thing to know. There's also these two, these two extra ones that I'm going to drop because I don't want this, I'm not sure what these are. So we're gonna drop these last two. I do wanna drop these last two, but uh, let's, just double check and see what they represent. So if we do a tail of two on our unemployment data frame metadata, we can see that um, this is a series, I think that is, uh, has been discontinued. And the other one is the business cycle developments. I don't think we want either of these. So we're gonna drop both of those two just to only have state and overall data. We'll drop that with an axis of one. And this is our going to be our unemployment results. Let's go ahead and save that, move that over here. So it's all in the same cell. And now if we go to unemp results, we can see that we have a data frame with all of the unemployment data that we might want to see. And let's go ahead and use a different plotting tool to plot this. So I'm gonna actually drop the first one because it's not a statewide unemployment rate. 
And we're gonna also drop NA axis equals one. And we're, let's just call this unemployment states. And we're gonna take here unemployment states and we're gonna check to see where the null values are. So we're gonna say is NA and then a sum with the axis equals one. This will tell us how many missing values we have for each date and we'll plot this just to make sure that we can um, drop this. So yeah, it looks like this, these are the dates prior to when they started, they, prior to when they started provided monthly unemployment rates for states. So we're gonna go ahead and that was just a track check to make sure we can uh, drop NA. And we'll go ahead and save this as our unemployment states again. Okay, let's use Plotly Express to plot um, this as a line plot. And we're gonna do PX line, and we're gonna give it the data frame of unemployment states. And then we are going to, yeah, go ahead and plot this. So the nice thing about using Plotly Express now is that we actually have an interactive plot where we can filter to certain states by double clicking on them. We can show multiple states next to each other. So yeah, here's New York versus Utah. You can see the difference in unemployment rates. And um, it's a lot of insights that you can pull from this just by clicking around. Now I do have a dark theme on my web browser right now that makes it a little hard to read, but um, if you were in normal mode, you'd be able to see this with uh, a little bit clearer. So this is plot states unemployment rate. Very cool. And we know that there was a big jump in unemployment here in April of 2020. Maybe an interesting thing that we could look at with this data is actually pulling each state's unemployment rate on that date. And we can do that uh, pretty easily. Let's, let's title this pull April 2020 unemployment rate per state. We'll take this unemployment states and we'll take where the index is equal to 2020, 04, 01. And then we'll locate where this occurs. And let's make this a bar plot. So let's, let's, uh, first transform it, what this will do is this will flip the whole data set so that we have the value, each column is now a different state. And then we're gonna sort the values of this date column. Now we have them in order of lowest to the highest unemployment rate and on that month and we can go ahead and plot i'm just putting this backslash so i can split up my lines here i like to split up my lines and we're going to do the kind equals bar um, with the fig size is 10 by 5. and you can see here now we have a bar plot with all the different states and their unemployment rates let's say the title is un unemployment rate by state April 2020 there we go uh, a few other things is we want to remove this legend for this column so I'm just going to save off this plot as an its axis and do uh, legend remove from this, which will remove the legend. You can see the highest one here is Nevada. It looks like Nevada was hit, obviously hit the most since they have a lot of travel. 
And Wyoming was had the least highest unemployment rate in April of 2020. One thing I'd like to do is since each of these, the text is not really easy to understand since this is the Fred index ID name for each of these. Let's try to switch this for the actual state name. And this shouldn't be too hard. What we're gonna do here is take our results. We're gonna take our, go back to this metadata. And we see here that for each ID, there's also the column that's called title. So the title looks like they all have what it says unemployment rate in and then the state name and the full state name. So we can make a new column called state name by doing a string on this column and then strip and we strip out where it says unemployment rate in. Actually, we're gonna do a replace of unemployment in and replace it just with an empty string. And now we have all of the IDs matched up with the state names, or in the case of this unrate, it actually links to unemployment rate. And then we're gonna make this into a dictionary. And you'll see why this dictionary will be helpful in a second, because we can actually map all these names of the IDs to the state name. So we're gonna call this ID to state. So we're gonna take this mapping dictionary that we've created and leverage it to rename the columns in the data frame that we have above called unemployment states. And I'm gonna show you how we'll do that here, right, very easily. So we'll take the unemployment states data frame and we'll take the columns from it by doing dot columns. And we're gonna use something called list comprehension here. It's really handy in Python if you've never used it before. But we can actually go through each of these values in the columns and apply um, the mapping to it. So if we did C for C in the columns, we'll just get a list of each of the state's IDs in each column. But we wanna transform it, so we're gonna actually, instead of doing C for C in unemployment rates, we're gonna do the ID to state mapping value, which will give us the state name for each state in the columns. And then we can just write over what the column names are with this, and voila. Now if we look at unemp states, we have the actual state names here as the title. So I'm gonna go back and use this, new, use this new version of the unemployment states data frame to make our plots from before. Let's go up here to where we made it originally, use this ID mapping and redo our line plot. There, now we have full state names here, which is nice. And then we'll have this plot again. I actually think this would look better as a horizontal bar chart. So I'm gonna change this from bar to bar H. And yeah, now we can read the states a little bit better. And let's do the width as one. This will make it fill out a little bit more, maybe 0.9. I'm also adding in an edge color is black, which is nice because then you can kind of see the outline of each a little bit better. And I like this, I think this looks nice and it shows us each state's unemployment rate at this um, date. So X label now is percent unemployed. That's nice. Another interesting economic metric that we can look compared to the unemployment rate is something called the participation rate. And that's just another indicator of people who are participating in the job market. So let's try to pull the participation rate similar to what we did before. And we're gonna actually reuse a lot of the code that we wrote before. That's the nice thing about writing it in Python and Pandas is we can reuse the same 
ideas over and over again and not have to redo um, things like we would in a spreadsheet. Like we did before with unemployment rate, let's search for the participation rate. We're gonna make sure it's monthly and that it's seasonally adjusted and a percentage. So let's see what the result is when we pulled this. We have the same deal or we have a bunch of results. What's the shape of this? It's 51, so it's each state's result. Now let's do the same mapping that we did before where we take the title and we're gonna take out where it says labor force participation rate four and make a dictionary for this. And that'll be our participation ID to state. And let's do our loop through where we'll get and combine all of our results for the unemployment Employment, similar to what we did with the unemployment rates. And we'll call this states. We're going to loop through instead of the unemployment rate, the participation results, and this should look good. I don't think we need to drop this anymore since it's not in, in there. Now that that's done running, we're just gonna do the same thing with the uh, participation with states, R column renames. Okay, so now we have the participation data for each state over time, similar to like we did with the, the unemployment data. Let's put this up here. And let's think of uh, maybe an interesting plot we could do with the combination of both the participation data and the unemployment data. And that'll be our final plot. So let's try to plot the unemployment rate versus the participation rate for each state over the years 2020 and 2021. I think we can do that pretty easily. So let's, um, let's just start by taking an example of one state. And we'll start with the unemployment rate. Remember we called this unemp states. So we take this and we'll take New York and we'll query where the index is greater than 2020, greater than or equal to 2020, and the index is less than 2022. And we'll plot this. So this is the unemployment rate for the state of New York for these two years. And then we'll also, we're going to actually take this and make a figure and plot this on that axis of this figure. And we'll do the exact same thing with our participation. So you can see up here is the participation, down here is the unemployment. We can actually make a second axis off of this by using something called twin x. And then plot this second plot on that second one. Let's make the color of this in our color palette, the second value. And there we go, we have the unemployment rate versus the participation rate. Let's turn the grid off on that second one. There we go. And let's also put a title in for this axis. Set title, and this is gonna be New York. But we wanna do this for all 50 states, and we can do this by creating this exact same plot, but within subplots of a, mi a bigger figure. So the way we do this is we'll do, um, let's do 10 by five, and let's also make the fig size as 10 by 10. And now these, instead of an axis, will be axes. There are gonna be multiple axes that this will provide us. 
and that will loop over. We have to make sure we flatten this. And now what we have here are a bunch of different axes that we'll be able to plot on. It's hard to see here, but there's a bunch of different, 50 different um, axes that we can plot on. And we'll actually iterate over each column in our unemployment states to get this. So let's take our columns, which is each state, for state and these. And we're gonna do everything we did before. But instead of this, we'll take the axis of the index location. So this is our index location, or i. We'll make it start at zero, and we'll increment it each time. And then this is gonna be our state name. And the column that we'll pull in is our state column, not just New York. And at the end, let's do plot.show. So it looks like the unemployment states has a different name for the District of Columbia. It looks like District of Columbia has the word the in it and the uh, participation column is District of Columbia. So we'll just replace this column name by doing a rename. Rename of the columns. And we can provide this a dictionary of the District of Columbia for this unemployment states and rename it as District of Columbia. And we'll overwrite this, call it fix DC. and try rerunning this again. Since we only have 50 spots here, we're gonna skip the District of Colum Columbia. So, so if the state equals District of Columbia, we're just gonna continue here, right? And we have to actually change what we're referencing here for the axis and every part of this plot or else it won't work. Now, things look a little jumbled up here. We can fix this by doing a few things. I'm gonna make it so this figure does share X as true and share Y as true. Because they're the same, should be the same scales-ish. Um, actually, let's just share Y. Because the dates are all the same. And then we'll also do something here called plot tight layout. This will make the uh, titles not overlap as much. And when we set the title, let's make the font size a little bit smaller. So let's make it eight. That did not work. So I think what we actually have to do here. So here we're gonna make this fig size a little bit bigger. Actually we wanna do share X. Let's share X. Okay, so this is pretty cool. We can see every state here and how their particip participation rate and unemployment rate were affected over uh, 2020 and 2021. You can see each state sort of has its own profile. And if you dig into this deeper, you might be able to explore why maybe some states responded differently than, than others in both participation rate and unemployment rate. All right, that's the end. Now you explore. Thanks so much for watching this video about exploring economic data using Python, Pandas, and the FRED API. This is just scratching the surface of all the things you can do with these tools. I challenge you to take the notebook that we worked on here today Try editing it, looking at some of the data and seeing if you can find some insights from either this or some other financial indicators that you can pull easily from Fred. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this and if there were any other things that 
you would like me to go over in future videos. And of course, subscribe so you'll be alerted when my next videos go live. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.